Joe Biden said he's going to start letting refugees into the United States of America. It's been over three weeks, hasn't happened yet, because they're still waiting for his signature on some legal documents. It hasn't happened. I don't know if he hasn't had an opportunity to sign these legal documents, or there's a problem with these legal documents, or he just doesn't want to do it and had a nice photo op for the cameras. But still, refugees have not been allowed in the United States. Hundreds have been approved, booked on flights to come to the United States, and then, while on the airplane, on the tarmac, taken off the flight, according to resettlement agencies who are working directly with refugees, President Biden pledged to increase the number of refugees who could be admitted to the United States after obvious historic lows under Trump. It's now three weeks. Nothing's changed. Last week, 60 refugees were unbooked from their flights, and this week, more than 200 refugees on the plane and then off the plane. Biden's proposal is supposed to increase the refugee cap from the 15,000 under Trump to 62,500. He came out to the cameras. He said he was going to do it, but he hasn't put pen to paper yet. So the cap is still at 15,000. What do you think, Brad? Just your your opinion. I want to I want to know what you think. Do you think that he was all cap or he's actually, you know, trying to work on it and, you know, he has to go through loopholes in order to get them out here? I don't know what it is. There could be loopholes. I assume as the president of the United States, if he wants something done, it would get done. Yeah. So it's now three That's weeks later and it's not done really yet. Sad. It's not That'll done really yet, fine. and, you know, you can say loopholes, you can say documents need to, T's need to be crossed, the I's need to be dotted, who knows, okay? You know, I'm not there in the White House, but, you know, if I'm the President of the United States and I come out and I say I'm going to do something, God damn it, I'm going to do it, then he shouldn't have said yeah. anything, period. He should have waited mm. until it was ready. CNN is reporting that the number of migrant apprehensions at the southern United States border has jumped. More people have been apprehended in January 2021 than the same month in any of the past three years. Now, the reasons for the increase vary. It's odd because, you know, in January 2021, there was a change in presidents. But experts agree poverty is at the center of all of this. Struggling economies in El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, and Guatemala before the pandemic have further decimated by COVID-19. Now, I want you to know something. If you had to, Yo-Yo and Vanessa, mm -hmm. say one thing, one thing that causes all of this immigration at the border, causes people to come on visas and overstay their visas, the one thing, what do you think it is? It's jobs. You know, people are escaping poverty. People are escaping violence. Oh, yeah. But people are not going to escape poverty and escape violence to go to another country where there's no jobs. Oh, exactly. yeah, yeah. Definitely opportunity. Okay. So yeah. it's opportunity in America. Yeah. So there are American businesses that are hiring immigrants without documentation. For the most part, these American businesses get away scot-free. They take advantage of immigrants pay low salaries, below minimum wage salaries, pay people off the books, which is, you know, and, and then you hear, you know, get immigrants out of the country. But what is the actual magnet? It's American business giving them a job. Yeah. If there's no job here. They wouldn't be coming. This is very so, true. So, I mean, so if you, if you really want to say who is the bad actor in all of this, it's American business by giving people jobs who are undocumented and exploiting them and taking advantage of them. And then after they come here and risk their life to get here, have to deal with Donald Trump at the border, have to deal with, you know, low paying jobs, no paying jobs, go to work and don't get paid at all. And what are they going to do? It's American businesses. And the fact that most of these American businesses don't even have their back when they're suffering through all that, it's disgusting. Right. They literally are exploiting these people. Right. You know, and I was just telling... The but the fact that these people know that they're being exploited and they're getting lesser pay than what they deserve, and they still want to come here and they still want to stay here, that tells you something. That It tells you something that that's how bad it is where they're coming exactly. from. And I was just telling 
you know, Jilly, you know, Joe Biden, oh, he's come out with this U.S. Citizenship Act of 2021. I have never seen a statistic that says there's 30, 40 million undocumented aliens in America. I've never seen it written anywhere. That's just my opinion. Not that I've gone out and counted anybody, but I was just talking about this with Jilly today, and I've talked about this before also. You know, the government's telling us there's 11 million undocumented aliens, but that number hasn't changed in 21 years. So that, that makes you have to believe that either nobody's come and left or an equal amount of people have been deported as was entered. An exact number of people who left have also entered it. And, and that's just yeah, impossible. That, that, that. And on top of it, you know, I'm not bragging, but my office has seen or spoke to over 100,000 immigrants in the last 21 years since, yeah. you know, the time of 9-11. I'm not saying we have 100,000 clients, but we've spoken to them on the phone. They've made an inquiry. And I would say majority, most of them, are either undocumented or somebody was calling them because of that type of issue. I'm not saying every last one, but most, a large majority. So if you say 100,000 people called my office, at least, in the last 21 years, and there's 11 million undocumented, and it never left, that means 1% of the undocumented population called Brad Bernstein? That's impossible to believe. That is very impossible. So it just leads me to leads me to deduce that the numbers of undocumented aliens are substantially higher than what the government is telling us that any statistic. You're not saying you, aliens no more though, right? Undocumented people. There we go. Oh, right. Thank you very much. <laughs> I sometimes it's good that you catch me sometimes yeah. because as a lawyer, I learned the word alien in law school. I've used, it. I've used read the it. word alien in immigration court because that's what is used. It's like ingrained in my head. So thank you very exactly. much for, for correcting me. Yeah, there's more than 11 million undocumented people. There's definitely there's more. definitely more. Could it be 20? Sure. Could it be 30? Wouldn't surprise me. You say to yourself, you know, when Joe Biden says, well, you know, we're going to do this amnesty for people, and I hope it passes. If you think about okay. it, on a logical, on a very logical basis, not as an emotional, not from an emotional standpoint, because when you're talking emotions, your logic goes out the window, first of all, all right? And mm -hmm. everybody knows that whenever you're upset, you're not thinking logically, you're thinking, you're thinking, you're yeah. thinking emotionally, you get mad at somebody, you're very emotional about something, logic is out the window, okay? Yeah, you're definitely so, not thinking rational. <laughs> right, and with immigration, everything is about emotion. OK, mm -hmm. with Americans who are anti-immigrant, with people who are very pro-immigrant. It's all all on emotion. You know, this whole political thing that's going on. Yeah. But if you think about it logically, you say, all right, we got 30 million undocumented persons, maybe more, maybe less. I think the number's closer to that than 11. They're all having they're all here in the United States getting underpaid from what an American is earning. Everybody's entitled. There's a constitution in the United States, unless you're going to take the constitution and rip it up, which you can't. So everybody is, if you want to deport 30 million people, okay, let's think about it, okay, because that's some of the people who don't want to give the amnesty. They say, get rid of everybody. You want to mm -hmm. deport 30 million people, everybody is entitled to a deportation hearing. It's called due process. You're entitled to a fair hearing. In order to give 30 million people a fair deportation hearing, how many judges are we going to need? How many government attorneys are we going to need? Uh, a million? A million judges? 500,000 judges? I mean, how many courthouses are we going to have to build for this one? Okay. Right. And then let's say we get judges who are all Republicans and they say, deport, deport, Ooh. deport, deport, deport. Yeah. Well, you know what? Unless you're getting deported to Canada or Mexico, every other person who's getting deported from the United States of America needs an airplane ticket. You mm. have to fly somebody somewhere. You can't just say, go walk in the Pacific Ocean and, you know, go across to China or go to Europe or wherever you're from. So everybody needs a plane ticket. There's not enough planes in the world to fly every undocumented human being in America home if you want to deport them. On top of everything, people are saying, well, you know, they're taking our jobs. They're taking jobs because businesses are underpaying them. If they were all legal and they would all be earning what an American would be earning, mm -hmm. they wouldn't be taking so many jobs. It would be a much fairer job market, actually. So when you say, all right, 
let's take the emotion out. The only logical thing to do is to legalize people, all right? They're here, you can't deport them. They're getting underpaid. They're undercutting the U.S. workforce. So legalize them, pay taxes, mm. all right? Support the government, do a background check, know who's here. I have no problem with that. We don't want bad people here. And ultimately, everybody's wages would go up. So all the people mm. who are arguing against it are actually arguing against their self-interest. Wow, and they have no idea that they're doing that. Yeah, you know, I'm just saying from a non-emotional standpoint. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The Senate Judiciary Committee voted yesterday to advance Joe Biden's nomination of Judge Merrick Garland for Attorney General. You may remember Judge Merrick Garland from 2016. He was President Obama's choice to replace Antonin Scalia as the ninth Supreme Court justice because Mitch McConnell decided not to bring him up for a vote. The Supreme Court ended up in an 8-8 eight, eight tie for about a year until Trump came in and put in not only Brett Kavanaugh, but two additional Supreme Court justices from the Republican side. He's now up for attorney general. He has passed the confirmation hearing in the subcommittee by a vote of 15 to 7. Four Republicans actually voted in favor of him as well. He is now going to go before the entire Senate, and hopefully he will be confirmed shortly. He said that his first priority would be to fully prosecute the heinous crimes committed in the attack on the United States Capitol on January 6th. Why this man is so important for immigrants, he ultimately is the chief lawyer for the U.S. government on every legal case, including immigration case, that comes across a federal court. What do you think of the Cuomo these days? Man, he's What do you think like, of him? Huh? Uh, he went from America's I, I, darling to America's, I don't know what, in It's crazy six how, like, months. fast, yeah, how fast it turned. Yeah. Like, yeah. all these allegations, the uh, sexual harassment. I've been reading all about it. I'm like, this was American's governor, remember? Like, yeah. that's what they were calling him. Yeah, yeah, you know, when, yeah, yeah, because everybody loved him with his little, you know, slide presentations, and he's talking about mama's meatballs. Okay, yeah, but... Him, uh, him and Chris Cuomo going at it, like, I, we loved it. You know, like when they would go at it on Chris's show, I was like, wow, I love this guy. One of America's favorites at one That's point. Right. I feel like with politicians, when they're on a high, there's always something that comes up to just... Let me fill everybody in who's not up to date on what's going on with Governor Cuomo. A third woman has accused New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, three women in the last week, of unwanted sexual advances, adding to the escalating crisis facing the governor. This woman, the third woman, her name is Anna Rooch. She told the New York Times that Governor Cuomo approached her during a crowded wedding reception in New York in 2019. Rooch told the newspaper she thanked Cuomo for his toast to the newlyweds, and in response, she says he put his hand on her bare lower back. You know, I assume lower back means lower back, you know, like right above her butt, and it was exposed in an open black back dress, and when Rooch uncomfortably removed his hand, Cuomo said to her, oh, you're aggressive, as he put his hands on her cheeks, on her face. Cuomo then, it is alleged, asked if he can kiss her. And she distanced herself as he came closer, I guess, with his lips. Now, the newspaper reported that her account of the episode was loud enough and could be heard by a friend standing nearby who corroborated the exchange, along with photographs from the event and text messages at the time. The New York Times published a single photo of the two together at the event in which Governor Cuomo appears to be placing his hands around Rooch's face. The other two women, Lindsay Boylan, Charlotte Bennett, who accused the governor of sexual harassment, were both aides in the Cuomo administration. Now, Cuomo released a statement on Sunday saying, to be clear, this is Cuomo, to be clear, I never inappropriately touched anybody, and I never propositioned anybody, and I never intended to make anyone feel uncomfortable, but these are allegations that New Yorkers deserve answers to. Cuomo also acknowledged that some of his previous comments may have been insensitive or too impersonal. He's truly sorry for the unwanted flirtation. Now, other women who came forward included a woman whose last name by the name of Bennett. She was a 25-year-old executive assistant and health policy advisor to Cuomo. She told the New York Times 
that during one of several uncomfortable encounters, Cuomo asked her questions about her sex life during a conversation in the state capitol office and said he was open to relationships with women in their 20s. She told nice. the New York Times that she interpreted the exchange, which she said took place in June, while the state was in the throes of fighting the pandemic, as what the newspaper called clear overtures to a sexual relationship. Boylan alleged that the Democratic governor kissed her on the lips following a one-on-one -on -one briefing in his New York City office in 2018. So there's three different allegations. Yo-Yo and Vanessa. Yes, I'm listening. Mm -hmm. All I have to say is this, you know, two things about sexual harassment, mm -hmm. all right? Number one, you can only be sexually harassed in a workplace, all right? So mm -hmm. in terms of sexual harassment, um, so, you know, you, wherever you work, keep your mouth quiet and keep your hands to yourself, period. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. And it goes women to men, men to women, men Absolutely. to men, women to women. Yes. Be smart. Yes. We have some comments. Um, yeah, there's a couple Marge, comments. Yeah, Marge Hicks says, I'm so embarrassed for him because I really love and respect him. Um, I hope it's fake news like they tried with Trump, side eye. Yeah, I don't think um, it's, I, you know what, I'm, I'm thinking it's not. I don't know for sure. I'm, think, I'm thinking it's not. And the other thing I have to say is if you're going to run for public office, you have to be aware. I mean, how dumb are our politicians, okay? You have to be aware that the spotlight is on you. OK, and, you know, no matter what Donald Trump says, that this is locker room talk, and that's a whole other discussion, how Republicans can get away with it and Democrats don't. But that's a whole other discussion. That's a whole other schmooze. That's a whole other schmooze. OK, but the bottom line is this. If you're so dumb to not be able to keep your mouth shut and not be able to keep your hands in your pocket, as the leader of our state, you don't deserve to be the leader of our state, period. This is the thing. What you're saying is absolutely I mean, it just blows right, my mind that a, this guy's the governor would do something so dumb. But the thing is, it doesn't blow my mind because trash will always be trash and it will always come out in the light. You could always fake it for a little bit, but the real you is going to come out sometime. You literally have to live your entire rest of your life after you become a politician as this fake person. But this means that this is who he really is, and it's going to come out sometime. So it doesn't surprise me. Trash is always going to come out. This is not like it doesn't surprise me that a politician is a scumbag. Strong well, words. Don strong Harris words, yo-yo. Strong, I'm, strong words. Well, any any man that any man that uses their power against women, I, I can't I can't respect. I agree with you. I, I agree with you. I mean, I'm just saying I very strong words. On the panel, I agree with you. <laughs> it's true. I'm like I'm like, how stupid can you be? Yeah. Um, Don so we have Don Harriet. Don Harriet. Don Harriet said, "I'm very disappointed in him." Joan Erica said, "If if nothing came of Trump's accusations, then I'll wait to say anything about Cuomo." Which is what a lot of people are also saying because, like I said, he really won the hearts of so many people in this country. So a lot of people are like, "Well, I want to wait and see because it could always just be he say she say or someone trying to get a come well, up." Well, so. there's three different people who with very credible, uh, credible uh, stories. Credible meaning that there's details. They're specific. They're specific about what was said. They're specific about when it was said. They're specific about what was done. Um, in addition to it, it's not one person. All right, I saw in the comments right. somebody said, well, what about Biden? As far as I know, one person came out with something that Biden did back in the 90s, and it wasn't so much sexual harassment, but that he liked to touch, you know, but he's just a touchy guy, but never actually alleged it was as in a sexual nature. And there was only one person who ever came out against Biden with that, as far as I'm aware, at least publicly. Um, you know, and Cuomo has that reputation, that administration has that reputation of him being a bully, of his administration being a bully. You know, you've heard whispers about that for a while, you know, and sometimes also when people are in power, they think they're immune. They can get away with stuff. You know, just like when Donald Trump says, I can shoot go on Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and get away with it. You know, as you right. get more power, 
you think you're immune to everything. Yeah. But eventually, eventually, the law will catch up to everybody, including the pumpkin. Yes. I think. Marcia, one last one. Marcia McCullough said, I agree with you, Uncle Brad. Keep your hands to yourself. What is wrong with these men who feel they are in charge of women's bodies? Meanwhile, according to statistics from John Hopkins University, there are now over 114 million coronavirus cases worldwide. More than 2.5 million people have died. 64.7 million people have recovered. In the United States, 28.6 million people have been diagnosed with COVID. Today, President Biden said the United States would have enough COVID-19 vaccine doses for every adult American by the end of May. That means... Uh, that by the end of May, the United States will have produced enough vaccine to inoculate with the COVID vaccine, whether it comes from Johnson & Johnson, whether it comes from Moderna, whether it comes from Pfizer, enough vaccines to vaccinate everybody. That is a dramatic improvement from what Dr. Fauci was saying when Donald Trump was president, that we hope to get everybody vaccinated by the end of 2021. And it is a bigger improvement than what was even being said a month ago when we thought by September. It is now yeah. the end of May. And then they say by the end of the summer, the United States is going to have a surplus of vaccines that hopefully that they'll be able to give, hopefully for free, to countries that really need it. So that's, that's yeah. a big thing. So that means, Yo-Yo and Vanessa, yes. your, your vaccine's around the corner if you want it. It's around, yeah, because my mom got hers last week. My dad got his yesterday. Good so. for them. Yeah. Good and for And they're them. of age. They are high at risk, right. you know, so it's good. It, I'm, I'm happy about it. I, I want to get mine, except I don't qualify. You, you down there with us, Brad? I don't qualify for anything. Okay. You down right. there with us? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I'm looking down on the list. I'm like, no, 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 no. And then it's a court officer. I go, aha. Oh, only. <laughs> nope, I'm not a court officer. I got excited for a second. Nope. Hey, that's a damn. Yeah, that's a damn. It was sad news I saw today. Bunny Whaler, a founding member of the Whalers and reggae music giant whose career spanned over seven decades, died at the age of 73. Whalers manager Maxine Stowe confirmed that Whaler died today at the Medical Associates Hospital in Kingston, Jamaica. No cause of death was given, but Whaler had been in and out of the hospital since suffering a second stroke in 2020. Now, oh. I know a lot of people know a lot about Bob Marley and the Whalers, but let me just tell you, because, I mean, the most influential group of guys, you know, for reggae music, Period. Absolutely. He was born Neville Livingston. Before adopting his famous moniker, he was also known as Bunny Livingston. He was a member of the original Whalers trio with Bob Marley and Peter Tosh. Now, he was born April 10th, 1947, in the Nine Mile District of Jamaica's St. Anne Parish. He was friends with Marley since they were kids. Now, following the death of Marley's father, Norval, in 1955, Marley's mother, Sedella, lived with Livingston's father, Thaddeus, in Trenchtown, making Bunny and Bob basically stepbrothers. Right. And Trenchtown, by the way, is lyrics in some of the songs. Yeah. Oh. I've heard Trenchtown in Bob Marley's songs. Now, while Marley and Livingston were being mentored by Joe Higgs, the godfather of reggae, they met Higgs' fellow student, Peter Tosh, and then they all ventured into Kingston. Soon after, they were joined by singer Junior Brathwaite, backup vocalist Beverly Kelso, and Cherry Smith. Following a string of name changes that included the Teenagers and the Wailing Whalers, the Whalers aligned with Cox and Dodd's sound system and Studio One label, which employed songwriters and producers like Lee Scratch Perry and Jackie Mitu, and released the Marley Penn's Simmer Down, a number one hit in Jamaica. The Whalers then went on hiatus as Marley married his wife, Rita, and joined his mother in Wilmington, Delaware. During this period, Livingston was in jail for marijuana possession. But following his release from jail, Livingston, who was then changed as now known in the entertainment world as Bunny Whaler, began work on his solo album, Black Heart Man, beginning a fruitful solo career for Whaler, who would then win the Grammy for Best Reggae Album three times in the 90s. One, I want to ask the Brad Squad, what is your favorite song by Bob Marley and the Wailers? Um, but I'm also reading in the comments 
that Bunny, you know, is so sad that he's dead, but his wife is still not found and she's missing. Not sure if this is true, but, you know, we have a lot of fans that know a lot of stories, you know, with when it comes to reggae artists and stuff. So that's what they're saying. I, um, um, I want to look into that. Yeah, go look into that. I don't know what happened to his wife. Is yeah, she missing that's... recently or it's been like a long term thing? They said, yep, she wandered off and can't be found. Just recently? Nice. No, I'm not sure. I'm going to find out more, but it's multiple squad members that are saying this. Mm. So. All right. Well, we'll look into that. Get your tea. I'm back to peppermint tea. Hilaria, if I'm pronouncing her name right, basically Hillary, right? She's really Hillary. Mm -hmm. And Alec Baldwin, welcome baby number six. But this is five months after she gave birth to baby number five. So what, what? the heck? What the heck is what? this? No break? Well, how do you even get baby number six five months after baby number five? What the heck? Is <laughs> that even biologically thing. possible? Apparently here. Yes. Wow. A source Love confirms it. to the New York Post that Alec Baldwin and Hillary Baldwin, even though she keeps calling herself Hilaria, I get, what is the Spanish name for Hillary? Is it Hilaria? Hilaria? How would you pronounce that? Vanessa? No, he... Hilary. Hilary. Hilaria. Hilaria. <laughs> but she's not Hilaria. She's Hillary from Boston, Massachusetts. We already talked about this. Right? She, she's yeah. busy. That's what we do Yeah, now. she's Hilary Baldwin. She's not Hilaria Baldwin. I'm sorry. Hilaria. I can't even pronounce it right. Hilaria. She's Alec and Hilaria. Hillary from Boston. Well, she gave Hilaria. birth. Or somebody gave birth. Or some baby just popped out of somebody somewhere. Five months after she gave birth to baby number five, all of a sudden baby number six is in the picture. What's up with yeah. that? Talk amongst yourselves while I drink. I've never heard of any babies in between, you know, like five month span. Like that's wild. I know, you know, my brother and sister, they're, they're about tw 12 months, you know, and that was already, or no, 11, 11 or 12 months. But still, that was a lot, you know, but five months? Now, now, let me tell you this, because this adds some more. You want to add some more crap onto Alec and Hillary? Add some more tea. Yeah. All right. So one of the commenters, I guess, on his Instagram post asked Alec, who's the mother? She wasn't pregnant. She gave birth six months ago. If it was a oh. surrogate, just say it. If the baby oh. was adopted, just say that. If the baby was a product of an affair and you've decided to raise it with your wife, then just say that. Oh, my God. Right? Because it only could be one of the three, right? So this is the thing with that. It sucks to be a public figure because, first of all, that is none of their damn business. If it was a surrogate, if it was an adopted baby, if he did have an affair, that ain't none of anybody's business. But that's the unfortunate thing of becoming a public figure. It becomes everybody's business. I disagree. Really? I disagree. Because Alec, let me tell you what his response was, and then I'll give you my opinion. Okay. Alec replied, you should shut the F up and mind yes. your own business. There you go. That, that would have been mine. Okay. That would have been my so, reply as well. So I'll tell, you, I'll tell you this, and this is my opinion. You can't have your cake and eat it. You can't decide you're, not, you're going to be a public figure. Go post your sixth baby after five months and then uh, in the age of social media, not expect people to ask questions. If you want people to mind their own business, then don't post a picture of your baby. Because That's once you put it out there, you're a public figure, everybody has the right to know. As the National Enquirer says, right inquiring know, minds have... want to know. And, I, and right I'm in know. favor of the National Enquirer slogan. Wait, do they have the right to know or the right to ask? They have the right to ask. I don't have to answer. I have the right to not answer. I have the right to tell you to shut the hell up, too. Uh, yeah, but you're not if you're a public figure. <laughs> if you're a private figure, then yes. But as a public figure, if you go public and say, here's my baby, I'm sorry. Inquiring minds want to know. What do you think, Vanessa? Those are messy I, we, minds. We Those have are messy some minds comments. that want to know. The people that actually care about him and really fans, 
they're probably congratulating the family. But the messy ones, those are the ones that are asking those type of uh, I wanted questions. to know. I said, what the heck is this? What's going on with yes. this? <laughs> Paulette Price says Cameron was a surrogate baby, and that's what the news said. And then Marge Higgs is saying it isn't it, it isn't their business, but when they put their business out there, it is up for criticism, destructive or constructive. He started it. Exactly, Marge. You didn't have to put the picture up, but if you do, it's open season. Inquiring minds <laughs> want to know. I want it to know. <laughs> Yeah, but like you can't say that that that's a happy moment for the family. So what if he wanted to share it with everybody? Like that's like saying, oh, that, you you don't you can't share it to uh, to the world you, because you know you're a public figure. Well, no, you you can share it to the world, but because you decided to be a public figure, you have to accept what goes with being a public figure. I'm sorry, okay. When I saw it in the news, my first I I called up Jilly and I go, Jilly. How did Hillary Baldwin have a child five months after? Do you have this at Tuesday tea? She goes, already, and I'm wondering the same thing. So we're all, you know, we're all there wondering. You know what I love, though? What? My neighbor could literally have that same story and nobody would give a hell about it. That's right. The because you're, you're the one people know is because they see <laughs> them on TV. Because I see it all the time down the street. I'd be like, damn, you got another baby? But, you know, like the world don't care. <laughs> because your neighbor's not a public figure. Angel Manuel Soto has signed on to direct Blue Beetle for Warner Brothers DC Films Division. Variety has confirmed the film Blue Beetle will be the first ever Latino superhero movie. Wow. Uh, Gareth Dunnett Al Alcoser, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, who wrote Miss Bala and an earlier draft of Luca... Boy, this is, they gave me some hard names in this one. Luca Guadino's upcoming remake of Scarface is penning the screenplay. Blue Beetle is one of the oldest comic book superheroes, first appearing as a Fox Comics character in 1939. The character bounced to different owners. It is now landed at DC Comics in the 1980s. Soto's movie will focus on the most recent version of the Blue Beetle, introduced in 2006 as American Mexican teenager named Jaime Reyes. His powers come from a mysterious scarab. I don't know what a scarab is. What's a scarab? A scarab. That's like, remember from um, that mummy, the, the, the movie, the mummy, all those scarabs, those little beetles? They're little beetles? The okay. Yeah, I think they're like from Egypt, like ancient Egypt scarabs. Well, a mysterious beetle. beetle binds to Reyes's spine and provides him with a powerful suit of blue alien armor that equips him with some really cool weapons and some wings. Ah. Oh. Just from getting a That's beetle attached to his spine somehow. That's plausible. Are you interested in watching? Sure, I love superhero movies. Why not? I, I mean, I just, I just I find, I just find, I actually, I find it the most interesting. I'm like, so how did they actually get their superhero powers? You know? Right. I'm like, I'm like, come on, make it at least plausible. A beetle gets injected into I'm his spine. I'm wondering what's the storyline, though, because the highlight here, too, is that it's like the, the first Latino hero. Like, what, yeah. where are they going to be from? Why? But like, it's who, 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 apparently some alien technology that, that, that made him beetle person. Beetle, what's his name? His name is going to be uh, Beetle. Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle, or Blue Beetle. Like Blue Beetle. I'm calling mm -hmm. him Beetle person. Blue Beetle. <laughs> <laughs> Not Beetlejuice. Not Beetlejuice, <laughs> right. Blue Beetle. All right. By the way, before we go, do you have any secret, like if you, like deep, deep down, what would your superhero power be, Vanessa? I really want to read minds. Oh, mm. wow. That could be Yeah. Deep. You like to know what people are thinking. I don't want to know. Mm -hmm. I do. I don't want to know. Mm -hmm. I'd rather, I, I would uh, either superhero strength or being able to fly. I would just take, I'm invisible. I'm not here. <laughs> you know what? You just yeah. walk in the door. Brad here? Nope. Whoop. <laughs> not here. <laughs> but not I'm here. Invisible. Sorry, you can't ask me any questions. Boop. Not here. I'm invisible I would take and I'm transport invisible and can read your mind. What? As I'm invisible, I can read your mind and you're wondering where I went. Ah, that's right. You're like, I'm reading his mind. I know he's here. Come on, become un uninvisible now. <laughs>
Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.